When Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland made over $1 billion worldwide, studio executives sat up and took notice. There was now a rush to find the next classic adaptation that could transcend its roots to appeal to adults as well as their children. The plan was to trade in nostalgia, brand recognition, and preferably another public domain work. It was only a matter of time until someone blew the sawdust off Pinocchio and reimagined the character all over again. In January 2012, Tim Burton was attached in principle to the project, which at the time was looking to sign up Robert Downey Jr. The actor was said to be eager to star as Geppetto and to have input into the final script, as in this iteration of the story, the perspective would be from Geppetto's point of view, and we follow his mission to find and save his marionette son. The character, a creation of Carlo Collodi, first appeared in an 1881 comic strip before the story was extended and published as a book two years later. The classic story of the wooden puppet who learns goodness and becomes a real boy is famous the world over, and has been familiar in English for over a century. From the moment Geppetto the Carpenter carves a puppet that can walk and talk, this wildly inventive fantasy takes Pinocchio through countless adventures, during the course of which his nose grows whenever he tells a lie, he is turned into a donkey, and is swallowed by a dogfish, before finally gaining real happiness. Producer Dan Jinks would tell the Guardian newspaper that Downey Jr. will star as the father. When Tim Burton directed Alice in Wonderland seven years ago, it became one of the top grossing pictures in history. And so everybody looked at the giant titles that were in the public domain and that could possibly be exploited. That's literally what we did. I had been working with the writer Brian Fuller. I pitched him five titles in the public domain, and one was Pinocchio. The producer spoke of delivering a faithful rendition of the story, saying that the source material was quite frightening. It's nothing like the Disney cartoon, and Burton has proved many times over that children appreciate the dark and the mysterious much more than we give them credit for. He pointed out that the story of the world's most famous puppet transcended cultures, having been translated into more than 240 languages. Jinx said, The story has a dark soul. The book hides themes that have yet to be developed. The voice of the dead little girl, black bunnies, a nose that grows on its own, a boy morphing into a donkey. These are just some of the scenes that reflect the ancient oral traditions Pinocchio's author grew up with. I intend to stick close to that powerful story. The screenwriter hired for the job, Brian Fuller, was interviewed at the time about the status of Burton's Pinocchio. He said, Not only is Pinocchio one of the most emotional fairy tales, it's also one of the creepiest. I find the land of play sequence where Pinocchio and the boys are transformed into donkeys and sold into hard labor to be truly scary. If you look back to the original Carlo Collodi story, it's full of really subversive moments. It's a strange tale. I think the message of stranger danger still holds true for Pinocchio, but it is at its heart a fantastical adventure about identity, how we define ourselves, how others define us, and what ultimately we wish we could be. There are so many iconic set pieces and characters to play with. It's terrifically exciting. It's exactly why I love writing. Of course, I love the exciting set pieces, the marionette theater, the land of play, and of course, Geppetto's rescue from the belly of a big fish. But if what's happening between Geppetto and Pinocchio doesn't connect emotionally, you won't care about any of it. When asked for any hints about Burton's plot, the writer replied, The blue fairy is the villain. This version of Pinocchio will be a more mischievous character than we've seen him portrayed in the past. He's both a rascal and a romantic. Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland was so successful because it made good on all the iconography of the original Disney classic. It gave the audience all the memorable moments and characters they came to see, but with a twist or expansion that made those characters and moments wholly fresh again. It creates a sort of mashup aesthetic to these modern fairy tale retellings that can be a sentimental experience for both adults and children when it connects. The deal was never set in stone, despite Warner Brothers' strong desire to get the production started. Sticking points included the fact that Downey was slated to begin work on Iron Man 3, while Burton was said to be strongly considering the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children adaptation as his next directing project. As the project stalled over the next nine months, X-Men first-class screenwriter Jane Goldman was brought on board to do some script doctoring, but star and director would eventually become unavailable. Fuller would reflect on the non-starter project, saying, I wrote a script a couple of years ago and was in London working with Tim Burton on that. It was very exciting. When Tim left the project, they chose to go with a different script. 
The project then went back into development, which was unfortunate. It was essentially greenlit and ready to go, but then there was an abrupt change and Tim left the project. It was very much a Tim Burton picture, and the script I wrote was designed to be a Tim Burton picture. There was darkness, emotion, and a kind of recollection to Edward Scissorhands with the style of storytelling where there was a sweetness to it. There was a lot of humor of the absurdity to the situation, and it's Geppetto losing his mind with this doll coming to life. It wasn't as dark as the source material, because if you read it, it is pretty bleak and all about starving children and about what you do to survive. From what I understand, they are now doing something completely different that doesn't have much to do with the source material at all. I was so proud of the script, and developing the script with Tim Burton was a career highlight for me. It's a shame that the movie we were working on didn't get made, but I look at that experience and being able to sit in a room with Tim and talk about the story, the design of it was just amazing. I will always have that experience, even if I don't have the film. Is there any true on a Pinocchio movie? Tim Burton? I want to talk to him about it, yeah. Come on, it's Tim Burton. <laughs> Thank you very much.